Irish saboteur needs whiskey badly. Oh, and don't forget about me, Canadian canine, eh? Rogue Legacy is a 2D side-scroller from Cellador Games, the indie developer that created other clever titles such as Don't Shit Your Pants. I think I'm going to put my pants. Rogue Legacy pits you against an ever-changing castle that is home to a series of challenging enemies and bosses in which you need to defeat to open the throne room and get to the king, which is your only goal in the game. You know it's a sad day when you can't trust the things that you hang on your own wall. You! You shitty-eyed little s- It's you I don't trust. I'm on to you. The explore, fight, die, rinse, and repeat mechanic of the game is extremely addicting and as rewarding as it is aggravating. From upgrading your manor to make for better future warriors, unlocking classes and armor, and conquering the more than challenging boss battles, there are hours of fun, frustration, nostalgia, and overall joy to be had with Rogue Legacy. The story in Rogue Legacy clearly isn't a strong focus. The only direction you're given comes through vague journal entries that are scattered about the castle. Getting to the throne room and completing the game fills in the small gaps to an even smaller story that Rogue Legacy presents. This, in most games, would affect my feelings for it as I am a much more story-driven individual, but the type of addictive though repetitive gameplay that Rogue Legacy has is not meant for a rich and deep story, so for what it does, Rogue Legacy does well. You control your character with the keyboard or gamepad, though I highly recommend using a gamepad, as it makes for a more fluid control of your character. You can jump, swing your sword, cast spells, and move around differently depending on what runes you have equipped to your armor. What makes gameplay unique in Rogue Legacy are the traits and birth defects randomly assigned to the hero at the selection screen. These can be beneficial, hindering, or make no real change to your gameplay at all. Traits cover a spectrum of things like dwarfism, baldness, ADHD, and more, and while these are considered disabilities, some are downright useful. For example, the OCD trait allows you to break objects to gain more mana. And if they aren't useful, I'm looking at you, Vertigo, it will at least make that run more challenging and amusing, or cause you to murder your children right off the bat knowing that time is better off spent with someone who isn't so stupid. I really don't know how I would react if every member of my lineage was told that their child would have an odd defect. Sir, I don't know how to tell you, but your child is colorblind. No son of mine ain't gonna see no colors. Flawless victory. In your adventures, you will come across rooms containing fairy chests. Unlocking the chest requires you to fill a prerequisite, such as clearing the room full of enemies or get to the chest without taking damage. Failing to complete this will permanently lock the chest for that playthrough. The only way to retry that exact room is to pay a very hefty fee to the architect who will, for a price of all future gold collected on that run, lock the castle so that all progress made in the previous run will be saved. Although expensive, this is a very excellent way to retry a fairy chest challenge, scout for armor, and practice boss battles easier. Completing these challenges and opening the chest will reward you with either a blueprint to take to the blacksmith and craft new armors or sword, or it will be a rune which you can give to the enchantress to fit your armor to enhance your abilities, like gaining health from the enemies you kill, or increasing the amount of times you can jump, so runes are tied not only to combat, but into your overall maneuverability in the game. Even after you collect all runes and armors in the game, the fairy chest will still appear with challenges that are still worth doing. These will constantly test your metal, but you'll be rewarded with very valuable stat increases. There are also shrines in the game that will give you passive blessings, mini games with a very, very douchey clown, different spells to pick up, and mini bosses to conquer. 
The game's replayability factor helps to easily justify its $15 price tag, and considering one of the game's main mechanics is progression, death, rinse, and repeat, this works well. Rogue Legacy has a new game plus 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 and so on feature, allowing that when you beat the game, you'll be able to replay it with all of your previously saved stats, armor, etc., although it will increase vastly the difficulty of the enemies that are presented. And also on New Game Plus, you can pick up armor that you could not pick up in your previous first run. If I were to compare this game to another, it would have to be Dark Souls and Demon Souls, because even though the game itself should be brief, it takes much more time solely for difficulty's sake. This leads to one of my favorite game mechanics, which is learning through trial and error, as opposed to someone holding your hand. In the past years, many games allow for infinite lives, frequent checkpoints, regenerating health, and all in all take away most of the challenge from the game in order to allow gamers to experience the entire story. And while this is all well and good, it also feels as if these mechanics are there to insult those who grew up cherishing every extra life, knowing that we might not see this stage again for a very long time because of how hard it was to get here in the first place. These dire situations cause a player to take their time, plan each move carefully, and more importantly, it makes us truly appreciate the experience we are having. Too often in modern games do we find ourselves blowing from one objective to the next one, not really noticing what's in the background or how triumphant we feel from that previous battle. And that's because the sheer ease just has us moving forward. Through trial and error, Rogue Legacy will make your overall patience as a human being and as a gamer grow as you assess every situation, remember your previous mistakes, and take necessary risks to progress. This mechanic is vital to games. Due to my experience with Rogue Legacy, I found myself progressing easier in other challenging games because of the patience and strategy I learned through constant failure. This nostalgic beneficial experience has warmed my heart and truly made me love the game I was playing. Rogue Legacy's 16-bit art style is extremely reminiscent of the games we grew up with. Simple backgrounds pop with small visual details, many of which are ripe with humor. The armor and swords your characters gain have small detail changes in design, but are mostly just a color swap. And same goes for enemies. You'll encounter the same enemies, albeit other versions, in every section of the castle. For example, you'll encounter many bleached white skeletons in the entrance of the castle, yet in the forest you'll see the same skeleton, yet red, and with a different attack pattern. At first I felt this to be lazy, but as I progressed I felt that part of the graphical choice to reskin the enemies also adds to the learning experience and strategy of the game, much like the trial and error does. I know full well that I can one-shot the white skeletons, but after trial and error, I'll have to engrave it into my brain that the red skeletons take several more hits and have a much longer range of attack. By the end of my time with this game, I came to appreciate the decision in art style and enemy models because I thought it achieved a higher purpose than to be visually pleasing. I learned and grew as a gamer when I was forced to use one or two traits to differentiate the seemingly identical creature and assess the situations accordingly. So much like the trial and error gameplay, the visuals alone in this game helped me grow. Rogue Legacy is much more than just nostalgic and educational in its animation style. The element of death and review is extremely prevalent in the progression of the game. Just like in many action games from the 80s and 90s, when your character dies, it's frustrating because that death is permanent. Not only do you get aggravated, but you want to pinpoint what exactly you did wrong. So on your next run, you can modify and correct it thus progressing in the game and getting closer to the end, which is the reward we naturally as humans strive for. It makes it much more challenging in Rogue Legacy when you have to decide on a new character and take into account all the additional changes you'll need to make due to the traits or class. It's actually brilliant in that regard because there are various different depths of strategizing that you'll eventually yearn to roll as a spelunker with dwarfism so you can fit into a secret passage to collect the treasure. With each character's skills and disabilities, you'll find a use for them until the next death, it's a constant learning process that doesn't stop until the end of the game, and it's so rare to find that in modern titles. Each area has its own soundtrack that does a fantastic job of adjusting the mood. When you leave the castle to enter the underworld, your lack of vision is accompanied by slowly building danger music, making each step filled with more caution. You almost want to turn around and go back to the previous area, slowly because there's a less spooky as hell ambiance. 
The sounds of enemies sending their attacks mixed with the clashing of your metal sword, all on top of the anticipatory music, are all means of instilling the player to feel anxiety and tension. When sounds can double the level of difficulty you can already feel for a crazy hard game, then it has served its purpose. Overall, Rogue Legacy has granted me a truly joyful experience, not only in testing my skill as a gamer, but helping me in travel back to a time in my childhood when I truly felt that I myself were the accomplished hero who saved the day. All that being said, I implore you to give this game a try. Due to the amount of content, time you'll be able to invest in it, and replayability, it's a steal for $15. You, like I, will be much more humble and richer for the experience. So Canadian K9, what would you rate this game? I give this game two adorable paws out of two. <laughs> wow, it's pretty fantastic. Why's that? I liked it when the skeletons threw their bones. That was the super duper duper coolest. You just wanted to gnaw on a bone, didn't you? Well, of course, eh? Didn't you? I hate you so much. Well, hey, right back at you there, douchebag. I give Rogue Legacy four and a half shots of whiskey out of five. May the road rise to meet you, friends. Game on. Oh, hello, mates. If you like this here video, you should consider subscribing as well. Lots of new content gonna follow, eh? We promise it'll be a real hoot. If not, I'm adorable, so that works just as well. well alrighty then, y'all take care now. I'm gonna go do a do times two. That means a doo doo, of course. Bye now. <laughs>